Y'all, these five things have baby Christians looking at you being like, I thought she was a believer. They send a very confusing and deceptive message. With these things, you're not only misrepresenting Jesus, but you're misrepresenting what a Christian life looks like. If non-believers can look at you and say, oh, well, there's nothing different. Why would I be a Christian? I could do what I'm doing now and be just like her. And that is dangerous. And as your big sister in Christ, I got to tell you about this because I used to do these things too. And the Lord called me out of it through a sister in Christ. And so I hope that this is an encouraging video and not one that makes you feel judged or condemned because I don't judge you. If you do any of these things, I love you just the way that you are. And I did them too, but I got to call you higher. Number one, and y'all are not going to like this, it's cussing. Oh, and listen, I know that this is hard. I know that this is something that you built such a habit around. It's how you grew up. It's whatever. But the excuse doesn't matter. You are called to change. You're called to be set apart. You're called to be a stranger to the world. And so let's read what the Bible says about this. James 3.10 says this, From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as it fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. Cuss words are literally words that corrupt the English language, and you cannot tell me that these are the most graceful of words to speak. They're not. They are the opposite of graceful. And also as a life coach and somebody who deeply studies psychology, I need to do my due diligence in telling you this. People that use cuss words are using them as filler words because they don't feel confident enough in the message that they have to relay, that they can relay it clearly enough or with enough excitement without these things. They use it because they don't feel that their personality or the message that they're relaying is actually enough. They're said because of a desperate need for acceptance. And y'all, like I said, we're supposed to be strangers to the world. We don't need to be accepted by it. Number two, saying oh my god, omg or anything that could be relayed as taking the Lord's name in vain. Again, this is another habitual thing. I know that it's hard to break, but I don't think I need to go into this. It's not okay. It is literally against the Ten Commandments, so let's check out what the Bible says. Exodus 20 and verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. I'm going to give you a little bit of a two-parter on this one. So not only is it not okay to say, oh my G-O-D, but it is also not okay to use the Lord's name and not capitalize it. So if you're going to say, God, Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit, him, he, his, you have to capitalize it. I literally went like a year and didn't know this at all. So let me be your BFF and just tell you, people are looking at you like, why is she not capitalizing God? Why does she not capitalize Jesus? It's not an aesthetic. I know that it's cute to like put everything lowercase. Jesus is not an aesthetic, so capitalize it. I really love you and I had to say it, I'm sorry. Number three, nasty sexual perverted jokes. They're not funny. Number one, not only are they not funny, but number two, they show a lack of maturity. And number three, they're literally sin. Ephesians 5 and verse 4 says this, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. And then Proverbs 8.13 says this, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil, and perverted speech I hate. I just really don't think they're funny, and I'm like ready to be past them. I look back on when I used to make those jokes as a Christian, and I'm just like, that does not show Christ. Number four, gossip. Proverbs 16, 28 says this, A dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. Proverbs eleven thirteen says this, Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. This means if you come across a bit of information that shouldn't be spread to other people, you keep it covered. You keep it secret. If you find out some tea, that ain't yours to spill. If you've got resentment and unforgiveness towards a brother or sister, that's something you got to take to the Lord because that harbors demons. You don't got to take that to your other sister or brother in Christ in hopes to have them have resentment and unforgiveness towards that person too. That is manipulation and the Bible calls manipulation witchcraft. Overall, gossip is nasty. It is a nasty thing. There are seven things that the Lord hates and the seventh he calls an abomination to him and that is one who sows discord among the brethren. It says in the Bible that a tongue that cannot be tamed is a relentless evil. Really all that it's doing is satisfying your flesh. You want somebody else to validate your insecurity or your problem with somebody else and you don't need that. You don't need to satisfy your flesh. You need to kill your flesh. You need to take that to the Father. And number five is being drunk. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says this. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, 
orgies and things like these, I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but that's pretty freaking clear. It says that someone who practices drunkenness will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 says this, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone to destroy. When you are drunk, you are susceptible to the plan of the enemy. There is a reason they call alcohol spirits. If you are altering your mind and reality in any way, you are in sin. Whether that's being completely blacked out or just taking the edge off to deal better with your emotions and your day, you are coming out of sobriety to do that. Now, like I said, these are all things that I have done as a Christian many times, and I was living in a lot of them for a while. I needed a brother or sister in Christ to call me higher. I needed for them to call me out and tell me what I'm about to tell you. The Bible says that we as followers of Jesus Christ are responsible for our brothers and sisters partially to not be stumbling blocks for them. The Bible says that we are to represent Christ well. When non-believers look at us, they should not see somebody who looks exactly like the world and does everything that the world does. In Psalms, it talks about the followers of Jesus being strangers to the world. It talks about in the Bible how we are supposed to be in it, but not of it. And as your big sister in Christ, I want to tell you that there are younger believers looking at you doing these things, whether it's cussing or gossiping or whatever it is, and they're looking at you being like, wait, I thought she was a believer. They're looking at you being like, oh, I didn't expect that to come from her. Or worse, they're looking at you and saying, oh, that's what a life with Jesus looks like. That's easy. It ain't supposed to be easy. We're supposed to deny our flesh and pick up our cross every day. We're supposed to walk by the narrow gate that only few will take because it's not easy. When we do these things and we don't care about them, we don't care about how other people perceive them. We are selling a false gospel that you can love Jesus and do everything that you want to do and continue to live life the exact way that you lived it before. And what God calls that is lukewarm. And it says in the Bible that he will spit the lukewarm out of his mouth. He says, rather you be ice cold than lukewarm. So take these scriptures to him. Take your nose and put it deep in this Bible and find out for yourself what he says about these things. Don't take my word for it. Allow his word to speak into your heart. But as Christians, we do have a responsibility and we should take it seriously. We carry the name above all names as a part of our identity and we should be handling and stewarding that well. I love you and I don't judge you, but I am going to call you higher because I first have a responsibility to the word of God.